trying to apologize here. Apologize for what exactly? Well, for not being as nice as I could have been. I've had enough of this godforsaken backwater to last me a lifetime. For pity's sake. The stewards have done very well without you since the day you were born, and quite frankly, I'm happy to keep it that way. Goodbye. <laughs> She's coming. Gullible little fool. I'm Rag. We're back. Well, that's stating the obvious, isn't it? Bye, Celia. I do so enjoy our little battle. Sorry. Talks. Next time you want to get in touch, though, please don't. There's a good girl. Great excuse for becoming a dried-up old maid, isn't it? Oh. Oh, that's unforgivable. I do hope so. Well, don't let me keep you. Are you telling me? Irene, what part of no outrage do you not understand? Oh, I brought you a present for the baby. Colleen, sarcasm takes a lot more wit than you possess, and even then it's the lowest form of humor. Oh, good God, what do you think you look like? Dame Edna Everidge on a bad day, or a tea cozy. I had planned to slap her into shape tomorrow night to show her and everybody else that no one can treat me with defiance, but, oh, my God, you watch me now. That little derelict won't know what's hit her. Stupid, stupid woman. But hate her. Oh, yes. And I won't rest until I see her back in the gutter where she belongs. Of oh, such as. Well, I'm not at liberty to say. It's a private matter. Oh, how convenient. You're more than welcome to come too, Mark. Right? Oh, for God's sake. You and I must see the world different, I reckon. Yes, that was painfully obvious when you married Elsa. Shall we go in? You are a vicious, sarcastic woman. You don't care who you hurt. And you can't find a nice word to say about anyone. And you can't take a joke, Celia, which is ironic. Because you are a joke. Oh, you think you're so clever, but you still haven't fooled me. Oh, I don't think I'm clever, Elsa. I know I am. Objection! Bailiff, remove that stupid woman from my court. All I know is that I'm not going to stand by and let it happen. Well, it's not your decision. You seem to have great difficulty understanding that. You're just an absurd little mistake that my father sadly made. A mistake that's come back to haunt me after all these years. And if you don't want to be squatted like the irritating little insect that you are, you will butt out of my life. Do you have any idea what that was worth? Oh, Morag, these things do happen. You can't sack the girl simply because that of That was a unique, hand-painted, 300-year-old piece of fine porcelain. And it wasn't insured, so why should I bear the loss? I will deduct $50 a week from your salary, and you will stay in my employment until the value has been paid off. Is that understood? Yes, Mrs. Bellingham. And what would you know anyway? She's got you totally bamboozled. Oh, you're the one doing the bamboozling. I should have drowned you at birth. Ah, you're a police officer. Senior constable, actually. Oh, a judge, actually. You're looking forward to the big day? Yeah. Well, good for you. Hello, I'm Ailsa. Hello. Face to face at last. Yes. But in the end, everything comes out, doesn't it? You sound like you believe this rubbish. No. Just passing it on, that's all. Because if you really think that I can be involved in something like that, you're very welcome to investigate me. I've got nothing to hide. Good for you. You too! I'm your big sister! Oh, you know, it's quite extraordinary the penalty one has to pay for a single small mistake. And such an unworthy mistake. But of course, in my day, one was compelled to produce one's mistake. But of course, these days, there's a very civilized solution to getting rid of the problem. What a pity I didn't discover it until it was too late. Well, of course, I miss the courts. I've been in them most of my life. Well, that's sort of out of the question now, though, isn't it? Mrs. Bellingham? Excuse me. Could I have a glass of water? There is a tap outside. Sorry. Perhaps you could put in a good word, eh? <laughs> Pudge. <laughs> Thought I'd forgotten, didn't you? Pudge Stewart, we used to call you. Oh, well, not that you'd hardly credit it now. And we used to call you Hopeless Hickey, if I remember correctly. Could we have two cappuccinos, please? And I think we'll have them outside. Now, where do you think you're going? To bed. How dare you walk away from me when I am talking to you? You're not talking, Moran. You're having a childish tantrum. Good night. Who the hell do you think you are? You know, if it weren't for me, you'd be in some sheltered workshop making wrapping a mat. 
Despite everything that's happened between us, I still love you as my sister. Well, that's a very, um, Christian thought, Celia. And I must confess that I have feelings for you too. Although whether they're of a similar nature. Go. Oh, this is fun. All right. Ah! Some idiot shifted the chair. Ow! Morag, this is childish. Morag? Morag? Morag, what have you done to the roof? Morag, I know you're there. Morag, have you gone mad? Morag! You're probably wondering why I called round. Oh, the thought had crossed my mind, but, um... Oh, you've come to invite me to a blue light disco, perhaps. I've come to make you a very good offer, a very lucrative business proposition. Oh, you're selling Girl Guide cookies. To Ale, sir, I leave my fondest love. Oh, how very generous of you. And my first edition copy to of my Pride dearest and brother Pitch. Alfred, I leave all my worldly goods and possessions. Oh, well, isn't Alfred the lucky one? And to my niece Ruth, oh, I bequeath my engagement ring. Ruth, one small gold and stone ring. When he get back, oh, I hope the shock doesn't give him a heart attack. It has been known to happen, you know. Scotch, anyone? Yeah, we'll talk. Witness, I'm um, following there. We'll take a walk in the garden of Gethsemane. What on earth are you talking about, you stupid woman? Well, after everything that's happened, I think it's an act of betrayal. Oh, for goodness sake, Colleen, just sign them. You are without doubt the most despicable, vindictive, venomous woman I have ever had the misfortune to meet. Flattery will get you everywhere. I suppose you're wondering where I got these. Well, yes, I was wondering, considering they're not your property. Uh, uh let's be very polite now, okay? You know, you don't look after these very well, do you? Considering what's in them. You know, it could have caused a few problems for you in the wrong hands. Hey, Mum. Don't you call me. Look, I realise you must be enjoying this, but I'm not. So could we please cut it short? OK. I'm going to go now. Uh, don't snatch. Just say, uh, please. Please. You know, I am grateful, very grateful to you for returning these. There's more at stake than you realise. No worries, Mum. Sometimes I wonder if Celia isn't going a bit dotty. Oh, she's a funny old thing, but she means well. Excuse me. Bobby has more decency in her than that scheming little niece of yours will have in a lifetime, and I happen to be worried about her. I do so admire charity workers. I don't like you, Morag. I decided that the minute I laid eyes on you. Oh, I realize that the feeling's mutual. But I would have thought two mature women, we could hold off scratching each other's eyes out for a couple of days at least. But you, madam, are pressing your luck. Hello, Morag. Elsa. Oh, Morag. Elsa, what do you want? Hello, Elsa. It's nice to see you back. Um, you're looking very well, all things considered. Um, now, What's I just going want on? to understand that it would be absolutely impossible oh, she's for dead. to come back and live here. I mean, not only impossible, very silly. And people say you're um, off your trolley. Look at her talking to an mask. empty chair. And she's as mad as a head. Alfred, as you know, has not been well, and he can't possibly cope with a young teenager. The only reason you make people's lives so miserable is because nobody gives a stuff about yours. Am I wrong? Can we talk about this? Talk now? about what? What can you talk about? What it's like to be in love with someone? What it's like to trust someone and stand by them no matter what? You wouldn't have a clue what that's like. Oh, no, Martha, you're wrong. I know very well what it feels like to be hurt by someone you love very Let's deeply. Let's face it, you couldn't even keep a hold on your own husband. He gave your baby up for your own selfish reasons, so don't you dare go judging Ash and I. When the truth is, you're just a bitter, old, lonely, pathetic woman, and you always will be. Here. Here we are. 
You all right? Here, oh, I'll take it, Maureen. Um, I was... I was just remembering Duncan at his age. You know, he was such a daddy's boy. How am I going to explain what I've done? Sorry? How am I going to tell him that because I tried to put his father in a home, he has disappeared and done God knows what to us? But you said we were all overreacting. Yeah, well, I was just being the strong woman I always am, you know? The truth... The truth is, I'm very concerned. And I'm so scared that he's not going to come back. <laughs> Nothing is going to happen, okay? We're going to get good news any minute now. See? Uh, yeah, Colleen, I'm sorry. Uh, yeah, I'm but, but I want you to know uh, I've always held you in the highest regard. Uh, when things get tough and most people duck for cover, you never shy away. And you do it with all the poise and grace that most of us can only dream of. Oh, please come back soon. Oh, thank you, sir. I'll take care. Moray? I hope you find what you're looking for. Shouldn't I just try and get you two together? Only if you promise not to hatch some plan to break him and Carly up. Chickens hatch things, and I am no chicken, spring or otherwise. <laughs> You're really funny when you've had one too many. I have not. I'm as sober as a judge. <laughs> get it? <laughs>